So you don't need a spot healing tool anymore. You just do it all in frequency separation. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Mellow Edits. Today I'm gonna to run through frequency separation, which is a tool used for skin retouching predominantly. I'm gonna run through the theory, how to set it up, and also what tools you can use and what you can do with it. Now before I dive into it, I want to explain the theory behind it, how it works, so you get a better understanding of what we're trying to do and what the limitations are and what the possibilities are. So basically what frequency separation does is it splits an image into a texture layer, which we call high frequency, and a color layer, which we call a low frequency. To help us better picture what I'm talking about, picture this lens cap as being the skin texture, behind here as being the skin color. Now say I wanna remove the blotchiness, but I wanna keep the skin texture, then I just work on the lower frequency and get rid of that blotchiness so that the texture gets left behind. Likewise, say the skin color here is perfect on the lower frequency, but there is no texture on top. What we can do is copy the texture and stamp it on top. Now you've got texture and good skin color. And that's basically how frequency separation works. So without further ado, let me show you how to set it up. So here I've got a shot of Talia I've taken on another Good Shot Mate trip. So basically I've already done the color editing inside Lightroom and we're in Photoshop now. What I'm gonna quickly do though is I am gonna crop for the four x five for the Instagram. And this is a trick I learned from Irene Rodnick, who I follow on YouTube. She is a very talented photographer. I will leave a link to her channel below. Now we've got a bit of transparent bands on the side. What I'm gonna do is use the marquee tool, highlight up to body, right click, free transform, distort. And just drag it across. And likewise on the other side, I'll do the same thing. Pre-transform, distort. Press enter and then control D or command D to deselect. All right, so pretty happy with the crop now. What I'm gonna do is set it up for frequency separation. So I will call this the background layer. Duplicate it and then I'm gonna call this the low frequency layer, duplicate it again. And I'm gonna call it high frequency layer. And just lock this. All right, so gonna unclick the visibility button for the high frequency, click on the low frequency layer. Now we're gonna go to filter, blur. Traditionally, people use Gaussian blur for frequency separation, but what I learned from Danny Patiste is noise median. So let me just show you quickly why we don't use Gaussian Blur. Say I use Gaussian Blur to set it up. Notice the edges aren't as defined. Problem with that is when you start working on colors or mixing it or even Gaussian Blurring behind, you start getting a bit of bleed across. Whereas if I go Filter, Noise, Median, you get that hard defined edge, which is what you want when you're mixing colors. So what we're trying to achieve here is we're gonna set a radius to a point where you don't see the pores anymore in her skin. So I'm just gonna keep adjusting it until it seems about right. Four's a bit too less, so if I go six, still sort of there. That's too much. See, now the eyes, the edges of her eyes are gone. So let's bring that back to six. Now, the closer you are to the model, the bigger the radius you have to use. So there's something to keep in mind as a general guideline. But the real indicator we're looking for here is the skin pores. So I'd say six pixels is about right. Let's, let's just go with that. Next, we're gonna go to the high frequency layer and we're gonna go image, apply image, select layer low frequency, click on invert, blending mode add, scale of two, offset of zero. Then we're gonna go to blend mode and then we're gonna to go to linear light. One thing I wanna do note is if you're working on a JPEG file, usually the images are in 8-bit mode. The way we apply image will be different. So what we're gonna do in that case is we go to apply image. No invert applied, subtract two and 128. So if you don't know which image mode you're working in, here's one way to check is if you go to the image menu, go to mode, it'll tell you what you're working in. Now 8-bit in general has lesser colors for you to play with compared to 16. I mean eight is like 256. 
and 16 bit is like 40,000 something. Don't quote me on that. I am sure I'm gonna leave a actual figure somewhere on the video here. But yeah, basically 16 bit, you have a lot more control. So now it looks like the image isn't doing anything, right? Because if you've done it right, it's basically the same image, just split. So here we've got the textures all the pores and this one we've got all the colors combined together it's the same image so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna remove a couple of the blemishes or hair so what I can do is use the stamp tool change the size hold option to sample an area without the hair and just brush it across to remove that hair Same thing here. So you don't need a spot healing tool anymore. You just do it all in frequency separation. It's obviously a lot easier if you use the spot healing tool beforehand, but I'm just doing this as an example to show that you can use frequency separation to do exactly the same thing. It's such a powerful tool and I think it's very underrated. Vice versa, it's also very overrated because sometimes you get the settings wrong, it looks very plasticky and fake. The point of doing Photoshop is to make sure it looks believable, right? That's just the personal opinion. So I use frequency separation very sparingly. I probably even only just use it if I'm in a big rush, which never seems to be the case because I wanna you know, put in the effort and the time to really produce an image. Okay, so I remove all the blemishes. Basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work on a low frequency layer. And what I'm trying to achieve here is smoothing out the shadow transition. So areas like here, 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 and here. See the blotching is here. What I'm gonna try and do is in low frequency layer, I'm gonna try and make it less harsh between the highlighted areas and the shadow areas. How am I gonna do it is there's two different ways. I could either use the mixer brush or I can Gaussian blur the bottoms. With the Gaussian blur way, this is how I do it. Go to the lasso tool. Maybe a bit more on the low frequency layer. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then I set it to 10. Likewise here. I've got mine shortcut binded, so you could do the same as well. It's all right if you miss some of the blemishes or the textures aren't quite right. So I'm gonna to go to high frequency and just copy some of the textures across. There we go. I don't like the blotchiness here, so I'm gonna lasso it. Now the other method, as I was saying, is the mixer brush tool. I'm gonna sample the cheek and then I'm just gonna blend it across the top. Same here, sample that. And just blend it across. Obviously take your time with it. I am just speeding through this without much thought, without much care. I feel like I could probably lasso a bit of this as well. Maybe mix the brushes. So as you can see, this side of Talia's face is not as bright as here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a empty layer 
in between. I'm gonna use the brush. I'm gonna sample a color from this side. I'm gonna set my flow to 5%. Basically how flow works is, say if I set it to 50%, I brush over the same spot twice, it'll have that full effect applied to that one spot. It's not gonna go any brighter. But if I have 10%, I only have to go over the same spot 10 times to make it the same. That's basically how I interpret flow. Now, going back, I am gonna set it to 5% because I am using a mouse. Just gonna lightly go through that. A little bit and likewise on the forehead not too much because you want to keep that shadow from the hat there so let's just check the progress before after this is spot here so I'm gonna stamp that in all right, so I'm pretty happy with it now and I'm gonna go through with the rest of the skin. Okay, so that's basically frequency separation done. Now generally what I do is I apply a skin gradient map to add some gold tones back into the skin and maybe do some sharpening, some contrasting, maybe even a bit more like coloring. But for the purpose of this video, I really wanted to show everyone how I do my frequency separation and how to set it up. Normally I don't go through this tedious process of setting up each individual layer. I have an action to set up my frequency separation. But if there's any questions or other things you wanna learn, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you do like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, do subscribe. And finally, if you're not following me on Instagram, it is at underscore mellow.k. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. <laughs>